Earlier this year, we teamed up with Mike Kelly, an incredible architectural photographer based in Los Angeles to create art and architecture. This seven and a half hour tutorial covers everything from the basic real estate photography all the way up to the most complex commercial imagery. This video is a small excerpt from the seven and a half hour tutorial. And in this video, Mike's going to show you how he creates his incredible dusk imagery, but we made it a little bit more difficult for him and he's going to have to do it with the cheapest gear possible. All right, now it is time to shoot a twilight exterior. These are the shots that I've become known for and I'm gonna teach you every step along the way. We're here at this beautiful multi-million dollar house that overlooks downtown Charleston. It's got views for days, a private dock, all this marshland in front, and tons of cool architectural things going on. Now throughout this DVD, I've been shooting on lots of different gear. I've been using a 5D Mark III, Canon's tilt shift lenses, all kinds of different lights, triggers, we've been shooting tethered. It can get a little bit pricey. And a lot of people think the only reason my images look good is because I have a ton of expensive gear to throw around, but that is simply not the case. In order to prove that to you, I'm gonna shoot our exterior shot using just a Canon Rebel T1. Now, this is a four or five year old camera. I think you can get these on eBay for like two or 300 bucks. On top of that, we're gonna be using the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. I think this is like the cheapest lens that Canon makes. Now, we do need to get our flash off the camera. I'm personally gonna be using a set of pocket wizards, but you could probably get away with a cheap set of eBay triggers from China or something similar to that. Lastly, because my method requires me to shoot tethered, I'm gonna be shooting tethered. However, I'm not gonna be using some fancy MacBook Pro or an iPad or an iMac or anything expensive. I'm just gonna be using a smartphone. I bet most of you guys watching this right now have a smartphone in your pocket, and I'll show you how to tether that on the cheap, and you'll be able to direct all of your pictures using just a phone. So now I'm gonna set this camera on a tripod. Any decent sturdy tripod will do. You don't need to go over the top of this. And I'm gonna take a couple snapshots. These are shots that maybe a realtor might use to market the house, or you might just have for reference in your collection. It's not gonna be anything crazy. All right, so before we start, let's take a minute and talk about all the gear I've got out here. What I've got on the stick here, monopod, doesn't matter what brand, <clears throat> Nikon SB80 DX. I think these are like $100 on eBay. Attached to that, I've got a cold shoe so I can mount it on the monopod. I've got some pocket wizards. You can see the little sink cable right there. Uh, I've also got an umbrella swivel in case I need to get real high and angle the flash. On the camera, I've got another pocket wizard, uh, my trusty Rebel T1 kit lens, uh, Manfrotto tripod, and right here I have a Cam Ranger, which allows me to wirelessly tether to a smartphone. I think they support Android and iPhone. And if you have Lightroom or Aperture, you can plug a computer in there too. So that's free. If you want to drag a computer out here, feel free, but I like the wireless flexibility. I almost forgot, I've also got a gel on top of the flash, a little bit of CTO, that's a half CTO right there. Just gives light a little bit of warmth so it's not a completely cold light that falls on the house. If you don't count my fancy tripod and geared head, this is, I don't even know, it's 200, 300, 400. That's like five or 600 bucks worth of gear. Any tripod will do. This is a bit of a fancy one, but like I said, well under $1,000 to get started in this. So when it came to choosing this shot, I wanted to show that the house had dock access and a marsh right behind it, but if I went all the way out to the end of the dock, it would compress the architectural features of the home and it would lose a lot of that three-dimensional quality. The architect had gone to great length to design a lot of depth to the rear of the house, and I'd really wanna show that off. So shooting from this angle will show that, and in addition, it will show that the house is right on a marsh, on a dock, and that you've got a great backyard. So I've got the tripod all set up, and I'm gonna take some test shots. If anyone came out here at this time of day with this beautiful light, whether it be an iPhone, a DSLR, or a pocket camera, they'd probably get a great shot. The beautiful light coming across the house, it's in a great spot, and it's a perfect time of day. I'm gonna take it one step further and add my signature style, what I'm really known for. I'm gonna strobe this house and light it up, and it's gonna add depth, texture, and three-dimensionality, and it's gonna be something really special. So now that we're here, it's time to play a bit of a waiting game. As the sun goes down and the ambient light falls, the lighting from the house will become brighter. Once the two light levels are balanced, the ambient light from the sky and the interior lights from the house, it's go time. We're gonna start adding our own light to the house and that's really what's gonna make the shot come alive. All right, so this is my favorite thing, my favorite piece of gear. Just like I showed you with the iPad inside, this is using the Cam Ranger to shoot tethered to my iPhone. I can control everything from right here. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO, metering, burst rate, white balance, it's all right here. I can take a picture, it'll show right up. There it is. This saves a ton of time, because I don't have to run up to the house, then back to my tripod to check on the pictures. I can just do it right there and pop, 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 pop. Pew, 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 pew. We'll put that in, that has to go in. 
I'm adding some flash via uh, my speed light here, right to the house. Shows up on my iPhone so I can check my work. I'm just going along, maybe five or six strobe pops like the entire front of this house. Pretty simple. If it's a little bright, I can turn it down right from here or right from here. If it's too dark, same thing. Bump the ISO, close down the aperture, whatever it takes. My goal is just to add a little bit of light to certain areas of the house that could use a little bit of depth or dimensionality. My go-to starting point is a speed light set on half power with my camera set at ISO 200, aperture set at f8, and shutter speed of around one-fifth of a second. As the light falls, begin bracketing exposures. I usually do two sets of three images. Continue to bracket every five minutes or so through twilight. So all I'm doing now is adding a little bit of accent light to the bushes and trees around the house. You can see there's a little bit of landscape lighting, so I don't want to overdo it. But just a little bit will go a long way to adding that depth that I always talk about. I'm at uh, one quarter power. Uh, the flash power varies throughout the night depending on what I'm hitting. So there's no hard and fast answer. Here's a time lapse we put together of the entire shoot taking place, which lasted over an hour and a half in real time. Be sure to pay attention to how the color, direction, strength, and quality of light change throughout the sunset. At this point, you can see the sky getting darker and the artificial lighting in and around the house starting to get brighter, and when they're about the same intensity, I begin adding light with the flash. I continued adding light until I thought I had lit everything I needed, which in this case took about 30 flash pops. We were bracketing throughout the entire process and shot about 150 images in total. Alright, so guys, it's time to start editing our twilight exterior image. Now, this is definitely one of the most complicated things that I do on any sort of regular basis. Uh, however, it is by far the most rewarding and the most fun thing that I do uh, when it comes to photography. I absolutely love making these images. And as you just saw, out on location, it takes a while, it takes a couple hours to get all set up and to light everything, um, but because of the complexity and the size of it, you just can't light them in one shot. However, the good thing is that there's no other way to get this look, and it's a very, very interesting process, and I'm about to go in here and show you every little step of the way. Um, so what I've done is I've prepared for you in Photoshop uh, a file, which includes all of the flash pops that you just saw me create out on location. Uh, we've got flashes on the house, we've got flashes on the trees, we've got the sky, we've got all the files ready for you to go. So all you can have to do is open up the files and follow along and you can practice on them all you want. Uh, you can do all the little changes and tweaks, take your time and get it looking just how you want. And yeah, feel free to have fun with it and I'm gonna show you every little thing I do. Now the Photoshop in this image took Mike about one hour by itself. And if you buy the tutorial, you're going to get to see the entire process and you're going to get all the Photoshop files so that you can follow along with him and create the exact same image on your own. If you'd like to learn more, you can head over to fstoppers.com slash store. Or if you'd like more free content from Mike Kelly and other incredible photographers, head over to fstoppers.com for daily new content. <laughs>